Okay, in this video I'm going to be showing how I small uh, use basically two hammer stones and a billet for spalling. Uh, this is one of my hammer stones I use uh, during my flint napping. This is a larger one. They're both made of quartz, I believe. I thought these were basalt, but I've just watched another video and I found that these are uh, quartzite river stones or what they call field stones. Very hard and they're very rough. I'm going to show you my technique for spalling. I've been doing a lot of spalling lately. Just going to take large chunks of chert and go over the basics. Now, what I normally do is I uh, pretend I'm going to make a biface out of it. And I'll use what they call a Levallois technique. Uh, that's a French word for the technique that Neanderthals use to reduce um, nodes like this. It's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. You just go all the way around it knocking off flakes first from the outside. I'll show you here in a minute. Just find a good platform to start with. I already broke some of this up so I could see what was inside. Looks like pretty good quality material. You can use either a billet or a hammer stone. The flakes are a little different. With the billet they're a little flatter. With a hammer stone they have the bubble percussion. I'll show you what that looks like. The bubble percussion is uh, is very noticeable. See there's the bulb right there. With a uh, billet you're not going to get such a large bulb of percussion. So what I do is I'll just go around the whole piece. Like I said it's a Levallois technique. I'm hitting kind of high up on the platform. This is third and Alice Church from Texas. I'm just going to leave it like that. I'll spoil this thinner later. I'm going to make a blade out of it probably. The most economical way of course is to have your stone cut. You can either do it yourself or have a friend uh, cut it for you. There's a lot of flint nappers out there that have uh, cutting saws for this. And, uh, it's a basic lapidor, lapidary uh, piece of equipment. Um, I don't have one. This is sawn by somebody else. I don't really like working slabs, so I prefer to uh, spoil my own. Now my technique produces a lot of waste, but it's quick. Uh, I don't really develop cores. Um, I could show you one. Like this one, I could probably try to develop a core with this. Let's see top of course has to be flat or nearly flat and the object is to drive flakes 
down the sides. I've already driven a couple here. Let's see. I can hit this platform and maybe drive a flake in there. The uh, billet's a little more accurate. see where I hit there. You have to hit kind of high up on there if you want to drive a large flake. The first time I hit it I hit too low and it crushed the edge. Again you have to prepare the surface. That's usable. But the top of the core has to be prepared And this is just rough. Uh, the angle is, is good for driving a flake. Uh, you can make this almost completely flat. Uh, either way is fine. I prefer to have it a little bit of an angle. Hold it on my knee or on my, on my leg here, brace it. Hit a little bit high. was a little bit too high and it kind of reversed itself but I think you get the idea this is the core here this is what they call a core and I can continue I could follow that ridge see how the ridge goes down the middle got a larger spall here. I hope, I hope this is not going to be out of focus. I'm going to use a larger spalling stone. Now I'll just look for opportunistic flakes at the beginning. Make it more uh, like a saucer shape and then reduce it down until the final piece will look similar to this or this. This is usually what I end up with when I'm spalling these type of uh, pieces. This is a good angle here. Nice solid edge here. I don't grind usually, I just tap it. It produces these microscopic little crushes along the, the edge and that strengthens the, the edge there. So that's a strong edge. I want to hit here. Try to send a flake across. That might make a nice blade. And I'll just go around. Hopefully it's still in the frame. see where I hit with the hammer stone. The bubble of percussion is very noticeable. And that's a good blade. It can be used just like this as is. This is extremely sharp. Or you can uh, nap it down to a, a blade.
Now this is almost in the shape of a core here. So I could continue to drive flakes across here and remove long flakes or blades. I can remove long blades off of this. Just got to prepare this first. to eventually end up with something like this a real thick uh, preform at the very end I don't end up with the typical core at the end that you see in a lot of these Native American Indian sites see the bubble percussion there it took away the edge that's what all these chips are and that's a very nice size blade can be used as is and it's starting to become more saucer shaped there's a big lump in here I'll attack that somehow I'll figure out a way to drive a flake maybe change the angle on this and drive a flake in that way. I could also continue to drive blades off. Now spalling is not that easy uh, if you're a beginner and you've got a rock source and you want to get your spalls as economically as possible. I suggest you try to find a friend who can do it for you in the beginning unless you've got a lot of rock to experiment with. Because it takes a while to get used to knocking off large blades like this. You actually have to do quite a bit of napping to get used to uh, to spalling and creating cores like this. But this is just to give you an idea. I had a friend ask me about this. So I said, sure, I'll make a video. Let's see if we can knock this off right here. Let's see if we're able to do that. I'm going to try to drive a flake in here. And what I'm doing is I'm looking for a solid spot on here. I don't want to hit it with a little crumbly spot. I want a solid flat, sort of flat spot. It didn't quite go over the top of that, which means I gotta lower the edge more. That's a usable blade right here. It has a little bit of concrete in it so it's not that good but it still might be usable in the future. And I don't grind it like this I just kind of tap it. Now if I hit really hard I should be able to take the majority of that off. You see where I hit and I took that lump right off and I can use this later. In fact when I do that now I can I can take blades off of this to strengthen the edge. What I'm going to do is drive flakes near the cortex and get this flattened out. Let's 
strengthen this so I can send a flake across here to remove this bulb. Not too bad. Still have some of that bulb left. I want to make sure I'm making solid contact. And just go around. That one was a little small, I couldn't use that one, but I'm trying for larger flakes than that. See, these are a little bit small. I can still make a bird point out of that, but it's, it's very small. Let's see if I can get longer flakes with the billet. Well, that's not too bad. That's that's pretty good for a for a bird point. Now the edge isn't prepared very well. So I think you get the idea. I'm going to cut the video short here in a minute. I'm going to hit right here on this. I hit it but it didn't drive the flake far enough. See if we can hit this spot and drive a flake down here. That was good. I can use this flake. And when I'm done, I'm, I'm going to end up with something I can use. Instead of having a fat little core, I can have a, uh, a piece that I can make a blade out of when I'm done. And again, that's called the Levallois technique. Uh, you can look it up. I don't know how to spell it, <laughs> but uh, Neanderthals used it. smart and I'll just keep going around and I'll remove flakes like that last one very similar to this all the way around and I can make bird points out of this and a, a knife blade out of this that's it